Good afternoon and welcome to the J.C. Massey Field here at Georgian College and it is history in the making tonight or this afternoon as the Simcoe County Rovers take on the Oakville Blue Devils in League One action. I'm Alex Gallagher alongside me is Jake Burford and Jake uh, this is a, a great day for Barry and for soccer. May, what a special occasion for the uh, the footballing community. Uh, beautiful day. Um, can't wait to watch some uh, fantastic football on show today. Yeah, the first time these teams have uh, taken to the field. Uh, we have the uh, well, the uh, starting 11 here for the Rovers. Uh, starting in goal, number zero, Yasmin Jamison. And in uh, descending order of jersey number, uh, number four, Brienne Desa, the midfielder. Uh, Cooper Lee, number six, on defense. Uh, Marlene Sewula, number seven, on forward. Abby Rowe, number eight, on defense. Chloe Udenberg, number 11, on midfield. Uh, Arianne Devlin, uh, number 14, on defense. Trinity Esprit, number 16, on defense. Uh, Samoya Boyak, on uh, number 17, on forward. Julia Listro, number 18 on defense and Alyssa Nickel number 27 on forward you know the the women haven't had too much opportunities to play together but in the preseason games they've been very strong and the team's really been taking kind of clusters away from universities and it's kind of helped keeping uh, the same people together yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they gel. They've not had a lot of uh, pre-season uh, games to play with and gel, so it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, how they start the game uh, and how they gel across the uh, across the field. Yeah, and with a new ownership group led by some of Canada's most premier soccer talent, uh, the club's president Julian de Guzman, uh, Kyle Lahren, Janine Becky, and a couple other people. And for 2022 and 2021, the women's team goes and wins gold in Tokyo. The men's team wins the group and goes to Qatar. I mean, it is an illustrious year for Canadian football and for the promotion relegation they're looking at doing, uh, this team has a really good chance to succeed here in, uh, in, the, in uh, Simcoe County. Yeah, it's uh, it's huge. It's it's amazing to see the sport growing so much uh, in Canada, and like you said, with the females and then the with the males as well. You know, it's just great to see the game blossoming over here now. And you know what? Today, what an occasion! You know, the birds are chirping. The the star, the everything, the stars have aligned. It's a gorgeous day after a couple uh, days of rain, and the supporters are out. I mean, a packed house here at J C Massey Field, as we're moments away from the opening kickoff of the 2020. 22 Simcoe County Rovers season and what a big day also for women's soccer in this country as well I mean this is one of the first opportunities for a truly uh, gateway for great female talent in this country exactly Alex like you said you know the uh, the game is growing and the, the female uh, game is just growing day by day and it's just a great occasion today for the for the females out there. Yeah, then the opening kickoff goes as the Simcoe County Rovers attack the ball. They are in white, while the Oakville Blue Devils are in the dark navy blue. As the defense core looks to make the ball move, holding it down in the defense core, takes a big shot up the uh, field there, intercepted off the uh, waiting feet of Trinity Esprit, knocked out for a uh, throw-in. That'll be taken by Talia Marina Sierra. A little bit of a scrum along the wall there. That's also out. Another throw in for the Blue Devils. Some good pass movement already. And it seems that the Oakville Blue Devils have been able to kind of come out with a little bit of control in the uh, opening couple minutes. Throw comes back in. Fighting for it now. We have number five, Aaron Cliff. Knock the ball out again as they're slowly but surely making their way down the pitch. Right in front of uh, the supporter section, the Barbarians. A nice high throw headed away onto the awaiting feet of Brienne Dessa. Shovels the ball up to Sewula. That's knocked away off the awaiting feet of Nicole Maliu. Yasmin Jamison using the, the voice to get that ball, get under control, slow it down a bit, rolls it out to the defense. Uh, that's Cooper Lee. And the ball goes out towards our commentary box. And the throw will be taken by the Rovers, Ariane Devlin. Knocked out off the header. And the Rovers get the ball right back, Emily Porteous. Some excellent ball control up the side, through the center. 
So you can see there straight away, the Rovers, as soon as you lose possession, they're jumping right on the pressing and they're winning that ball quick. High intensity pressing game and wanting to win that ball back as quick as possible. Now in a game like this, and especially on opening day, it's so important to get the uh, get the momentum swinging in your favour. And it seems that there's been some pretty good battles midfield, neither goalie, uh, Lisa Lapadula for the... Uh, for the Blue Devils, but here's a good chance for the Simcoe County Rovers, but it's just got taken away. A great opportunity, uh, tried to maybe go for the cross, but the defense was there to see that ball. As here come the Blue Devils on the counter attack, moving up to Kiyosha Donker. Slows up, has two uh, players there in defense, and that ball's picked off by Dessa. Blue Devils have it now. Moving it back down to Porteous on the defense. Taken away by the Blue Del uh, sorry, by the Rovers. And here they come. Alyssa Nickel, she's got plenty of space, moves it over to Listro. And Listro tries to cross it through, but that ball is knocked away. I think when you get in situations there, if you're in that 1v1, can they look to take on the fullback and then get the ball in? They were looking for the early cross there, you know. Um, but, you know, as the game goes on, when they're building the confidence, it's extremely important that they start brightly and all build that confidence and take them on, get that ball in. Yeah, and one of the biggest factors for me today is definitely the wind. There is a slight, uh, slight breeze in the area, and that could uh, go in favor of the Rovers so far as they are attacking uh, to the left side of the screen. But playing into the wind is uh, not, not, nothing fun, especially for the goaltenders. Yeah, it makes it extremely difficult, and especially for uh, defenders as well, centre-backs. If, uh, if that ball, you know, you can't judge it with that wind, uh, it might get stuck or it might travel and go over the head, then allow the, uh, the attacker in and behind. Two uh, excessive clubs, I mean, two excellent clubs and excellent coaching, and the Blue Devils, one of the most iconic clubs in this League One match, and you definitely know the coaching staff is going to be hard on these players, but fair to produce a good run this season, especially since this is going to be the creme de la creme of the uh, women's side. It curved into the wind. They were already starting to see the wind come into play as Yasmin Jamison, the goaltender, gets a good curve, uh, kicking that ball right into the breeze. But it goes out. One thing I'm seeing straight off the bat is the, uh, the Blue Devils are very comfortable in possession. You know, as soon as they get the ball, they're very comfortable in that passing game, keeping the ball and making the Rovers move. Now the Rovers definitely seem to be doing more chasing than uh, attacking. Uh, possession's gone in favor of the Blue Devils so far, but the Rovers have a chance to come back. A big stretch ball there and a hard check from behind. That was uh, Malhado onto the back of uh, Marlene Sewula. No foul given, but the play goes back in. And that one, trying to maybe see a long cross, but that was just cleared out by the wind. And um, Devlin will look to move that ball back in. Rovers with possession. Under siege. And the ball goes through, Lapadula. Former Ryerson Ram comes out to play the uh, ball. Won countless awards during her time with the Ryerson women's soccer team. Moves it up, takes a slow possession there as they move it up to the uh, defense, taking time to see what their options are. Running it out now. It is, the Blue Devils are very calm on the ball. I know they just gave away possession there, but you can see that they're always looking to keep the ball, make the rollers work, make them move. But so far, the, uh, the Rovers are quite organized. They're doing really well so far, winning the ball back and keeping their shape. Of course, uh, you know, the Blue Devils, they're more of an established club, having been in the league for more years. But the Rovers, despite having that kind of baby club aspect, uh, they're able to move the ball. And as we see down the field, a great pass. Shot comes in for Lapadula. She makes no mistake, gobbles that ball up. And you can see, you know, a, a few times now, so far in the game, um, the Rovers are looking wide. They're looking here to get it to the left winger and then get that cross in, get that early cross in. And a good opportunity for the Blue Devils. Streaking up the left side wing, that's Kaylee Cowles. But she's got some, a uh, little bit too much mustard on that, uh, on that pass there as the ball goes out. That'll be a goal kick for Yasmin Jamison. two uh, defenders. Cooper Lee was right on that ball, making sure that she couldn't get any type of lane should she get there. 
the Rovers will start back from square one as a good challenge coming from number five. That's Aaron Cliff. They bump into each other. The ball stolen away by the Rovers, but stolen right back by the um, Blue Devils. And the Rovers now have possession. Lee gets a nice uh, ball through up to the feet of Listro. Listro trying to find maybe shot for Sawula, but just too much uh, too much curve on that one, and it found the footing of one of the Blue Devils defenders. Trying to keep it in along the wall. Couldn't do it was Trinity Esprit. Throw comes in, a good challenge, but the Blue Devils get that ball away. Maybe trying to send uh, Cowles down the wing there. Yasmin Jamison holds back, has the ball at her feet, offs to pick it up. And she goes it out to the right side of the pitch. Taken away. And knocked out off one of the heads of, I believe that was number 16, Chelsea Spencer. Moving the ball through the center, back to Lee. As the Rovers start now to have an attack building, streaking on the wall with speed. Here they come. That's Trinity Esprit, but there's too much uh, too much power on that ball, knocks it out. And Elisa Lapadula gets her first goal kick of the afternoon. You can see now the Rovers are starting to grow into the game. They're finding that confidence now. The 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 few nerves were at the we're at the beginning of the game, now seem to have settled. They're feeling a little bit more comfortable on the ball. Um, and they're starting to play some really nice football. It's going to be tough for any new uh, any new team. New players, the long off-season. I mean, the winters here are long, and mm -hmm. these players have been itching to get onto the pitch, itching to get going. And it seems two quick starts by both these teams as the Blue Devils trying to make some work happen. Lee in there, about a four uh, a four player dive and a good chance in the middle almost uh, outsprung but Yasmin Jamison clears it running in with a head of steam was uh, Sierra but Jamison cool calm and collected yep the counter was on there they tried to look nice and quickly to break free there the Rovers but just unlucky with it a good sliding tackle holds possession takes it back looks maybe to the far wing Goes back to the defense. Lee kicks it through. A stretch pass goes down the long side for Listro, but a sliding dive there knocks that ball away. Emily Porsche, she's been on it today. Emily Porsche, she's had some great vision, some great eyes to kind of knock away any possible chances for the Rovers. Someone they're going to have to try to find a counter for as the cross comes in, and Lapadula sees that one coming. Oh, the first, uh, the first decent shot on goal for the Rovers so far. A good one into the sun. Salapadula so takes advantage of that kick. Finds Cowles, but she's immediately under siege. And you can see that press straight away there from the Rovers again. As soon as they lose possession, they're right on that ball. Pressing nice and quickly, trying to win that ball back. And knocked down was uh, Gideon Yaku. She wanted the foul. Ref did not give it. And that ball goes out on the pass, goes for Blue Devil Ball. It's a very physical game starting now to play. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're not meaning to do any of the hard hits, but uh, they've definitely been up their physical game a bit more, pushing and shoving, uh, a bit more battling for the ball, battling for position. Yeah, the 50-50s there, uh, the, uh, the ladies are really up for the challenge today. Um, I'm leaving it on the field. Throw comes in. A poor throw there, goes right under the feet of one of the Rovers players, but here come the Blue Devils down the side. That's Sierra trying to cross it in the center. A shot out there, and what a save from Yasmin Jamison. Trying to paint top shelf was Adriana, sorry, excuse me, was Ka Kaylee Cowles. And Yasmin Jamison saw that one from a mile away, gobbled that ball up and moved it down the field as the Blue Devils will try maybe to come back again down the left side wing, the right side wing, excuse me, and that ball goes clear into the fence. Almost goes after the men's team waiting on the uh, side of the pitch there. But there's the first real good chance we've seen at the goal. Uh, impressive shot, centered uh, centered right easily for the top of the 18-yard box there for Cowles. And I think maybe she just got it off on her off foot and uh, allowed uh, ja uh, Yasmin uh, Jameson to uh, come down with that one. 
Lee. Ball goes, unfortunately, a little bit too out of the reach. Once again, though, the Rovers, they are looking to play down this left-hand side here. It's, I've counted a number of times here now that they are looking for number 14 to get on that ball, stretch the play, and play the ball wide. The, Ro the Blue Devils elect to slow it down. Nice pass along the bottom there, but stolen away. Here come the Rovers. But uh, a really emergency defending there coming from Melhado. But they're still going for it, and ball's finally cleared away, but it's only cleared about maybe halfway up. And here come the Rovers. They're still fighting for it. Top of the 18-yard box, sliding around, desperate defending. And the Blue Devils come out with it. It's Aaron Cliff. Here come the Blue Devils, and they get catch. I think they believe they got caught offside. But what a paddle in front of the goal. What defending by the Blue Devils. They needed it quickly, and they got it. Take a look at the replay. As the free kick now comes for the Rovers. And well, that's one thing the Rovers got to be careful. Is the Blue Devils there, they're looking to counter quickly. As soon as they go, they're looking forward straight off the bat. Um, but, you know, uh, straight into the offside position there. You can tell they're eager. They're eager to start going, get something together. Blue Devils are getting a little frustrated. They haven't been able to get too many clear shots at it. Yasmin Jameson, but here's an opportunity, a little bit of a misplay, and takes her down from behind. That will 100% go as a foul for the Rovers. Referee elects not to go for any bookings. Yeah, it was a clever foul. You know, they were they were there on the uh, on the break. They were coming through attacking. You know, it's a it's a smart foul to make. You know, near the halfway line. A good clear in. Long ball. Slowing it down. Seeing your options. Getting through the center. Taking it up is Dessa. Dessa's already got. She's got some fire from uh, Yaku. Nickel. Really bumped off the ball. As the Rovers slowly but surely making uh, making some movement up the field and keeping the ball in. Going to go for the long cross, but easily knocked away by Melhado. Up the left side. Through the center, back off, but knocked away. Ball comes right out of the feet of Nickel. That's Alyssa Nickel trying to get it through the center. She does. Leanne Dessa up to the left side there for Listro. But it is cleared. Excellent clearance. About to halfway, half field. Nickel. Nickel looks around, shovels it back to the defense. That's Abby Rowe. And now they'll start, but it's picked off. Stolen away, excellent read. As back the other way comes Docker. She's also got Sierra and Cowles. Leaves it back for Cliff. Cliff tries to find it, but that's knocked away by Lee. The lone, the lone player in there for the Blue Devils. Cowles had a much harder challenge as the hand goes up, but Yasmin Jameson came out to make that play. So with the uh, with the Rovers there, uh, when they're in uh, in possession of the ball, they drop to a three at the back. Then as soon as they're out of possession, then they drop to the four. Yeah, Jameson uh, should the offer. It was a great a great pass, but just caught her offside. Uh, but Jameson was there to make the easy read and slide to get that ball away. So an excellent kick down the field by Yasmin Jameson. And that ball unfortunately goes out. So the Rovers have a great chance to get here, get something going. They knock it away. And Melhado clears that ball. She's been excellent on the clearances so far for the Blue Devils. Frustrating the, uh, frustrating the forward line there for the, uh, for the Rovers. Yeah, she's been a hard to defend so far. Great performance so far. As that ball changes hands, going over towards the Blue Devils, they take the throw relatively quickly, but right on the money was Chloe Udenberg. But the Devils get it back. Coming on. Carried back for the defense. A great pass there for Cowles, but it's stolen away. Here comes Nickel. 
Goes across center field. Slows. Tries to get a long stretch pass for Samaya Buyak. And Buak turns. She's got a little bit of space, not too much, but the ball is knocked away. Yeah, she needs a little bit more help there. You know, she was looking for the pass, and then by the end of it, just uh, the pressure was too much and lost possession. And they'll get nabbed on the offside again, the third offside in as many minutes here for the Blue Devils. A bit overzealous, as we mentioned a bit earlier. A bit too antsy to get the plays going, and they go a little bit forward before the defense there. Judenberg clears it back now for Rowe. Picked up by Nickel. Nickel looks for a pass down the left side there. Can't make it happen. And stolen away. The Blue Devils in transition. They're going to look, stretch pass, but it's just out of the hands of a little bit too over uh, Kaylee Cowles, and Jameson comes out to make that play. Yeah, just over hit that through ball there, you know, just take a little bit off it, and you know the, the Blue Devils may have been through then. And here come the Rovers. An excellent chance. Could have, but could have been for Brienne Dessa. She had a good moment, but I think she just got it a bit off her leg. It was able to be stolen. Lapadula now with the ball. She's going to try to hold it back, view her options, and she dishes it out to Melhado. Melhado clears it back. A bit dangerous move, but she clips it off to the side for Maliu. Still looking around, trying to find something. The Rovers, they've been hungry. But the Blue Devils seem to have the possession there on the field. But the Rovers are going to get better balls when you get turnovers like that one along the side there. I've got to say, I've been really impressed with the Blue Devils so far. You know, they seem very, very cool and collected on the ball. Uh, they're trying to play out from the back. I mean, this is part of the modern game now. You know, it's playing out from the back, but there's also that risk that you can get caught. But they're very, very comfortable, very calm on the ball, and I've been very impressed with them so far. And just a long pass out of the reach of Kaylee Cowell. And Cooper Lee will get that back to Yasmin Jamison, who dishes it right back to Devlin. Devlin, a good tackle off the ball, comes through. Here come the Blue Devils. And some desperate defending, but the, they still have the ball. Another great move by Rowe. Some excellent defending. The first real opportunity for the uh, Rovers that defense core there to really shine. Yeah, some last ditch defending there. Very well defended there by the uh, by the Rovers. And along the side there, Listro knocked off the ball. An excellent tackle. Blue Devils oversteps the ball for a second there. Yvonne Yanku, and you can see Emily Porches. She just, she knew she got a little bit ahead of that one. Throw in for the Rovers. And knocked away again, another Rover throw in. An excellent throw. Right on to the feet of Brienne Dessa. Back to Cooper Lee. She'll get it back to Jamison. Hold the ball as they move it up slowly. Taking it around center field. Dishes it up. Tries to go over the through ball up to Buak, but that does not go. And it will be a throw in for the Rover, uh, excuse me, for the Blue Devils. Throw comes through. Excellent ball of movement from the Rovers. Here we go, an excellent opportunity streaking down the field. Under siege was Brienne Dessa. As soon as she broke through, she had about three or four Blue Devils defenders right on her. Yeah, the uh, the Blue Devils have seemed very, very organized at the back, and it's going to take something special, it seems, to, uh, to break them down right now. Exactly. Some great defensive cores. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these players have played together in college and university, as well as other teams. As a good through ball through the center, but she had the right idea to move it to Listro, but I don't think she really saw the ball was coming towards her. That little stutter was all it took for the Blue, uh, Blue Devils to knock that ball away. And as I mentioned, that diagonal there once again trying to look for the width, looking at the left hand side and trying to attack down that, down that left-hand side, but you know, well defended again once, uh, once again by the Blue Devils. And some great ball movement by one of the leading players, Nicole Mayu. Does some excellent aerial work as up now, shot comes in, and Lapadula 
makes the stop, Chloe Udenberg. The first good shot on Lapidula for the Rovers. Made her, uh, made her make the save, and that's the most important part. Yeah, it was a decent effort. I mean, 20 odd yards out, it's going to take something special to beat uh, quality of that keep, uh, a keeper of that quality. Um, but you know what? It's a shot on target. You know, and uh, now the Rovers, they can start to grow on this, start to build into the game, and get some more shots off. And it's been it's been a very successful year for women's soccer here in Canada. The uh, women's the women's national Canadian team winning gold in Tokyo at the Olympic Games and. For, for a moment like that, what do you think a moment like that does for uh, women's soccer in this country? Well, you can see it's just the game is growing, like I said before, you know, it's uh, it's getting more more players involved in the game. The game is growing overall, but, you know, for, for women's football, it has been huge. And the, uh, the, the national team, the women's football team have done an incredible job in growing this. And then with that success in Tokyo, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And a real opportunity uh, for the all the women on the pitch here. This League One action has been one of the first real, uh, I guess, semi-pro leagues for uh, women's soccer. And a really good opportunity for players to continue their careers after college and university, and especially for development of great female talent. Exactly. You know, it's good, it's good for them. They can showcase their ability, and you never know what's, what's going to happen for their careers from this. Oh, exactly. Maybe some potential future uh, Canada stars here on the pitch today as Yasmin Jamison dishes the ball out to Lee Lee looking maybe to find Devlin and she tries but the ball is a little bit overzealous with the wind Porsche just manages to clear it right onto the feet of Dessa in now Sawula and a great defensive play there by the Blue Devils Melhado pulling the splits to keep that ball away from Lapidula. Yeah, that was fantastic defending right there. I mean, unbelievable through ball, but great, great defending to cut that out. And a long ball kept in by the Rovers. She's got some defense, she's got some help. That's Nickel looking maybe for a through ball, but that one's picked off quite easily. Yeah, they played it into the pressure. And here they come, here come the Blue Devils and an amazing play, Abby Rowe. Put on the Jets and what could have been a breakaway. I mean, I really think Donker might have thought she was offside. We saw her kind of stop, maybe stutter, and that gave her all the time for uh, Rowe to catch up and knock that ball, ball away. Yeah, she had a little glance you could see, but, you know, once again, last-ditch defending, unbelievable there by the Rovers. And the first corner kick of the uh, of the end afternoon. Crazy to believe, 25 minutes in. Uh, we have our first corner. The corner's taken up and in front. Just a bit too long. And hitting the ground, hitting the pitch in frustration was Porteous. She just couldn't get corralled that ball down from the from the aerial there. But I, I, I understandable time trying to get uh, to the to the far part of the 18-yard uh, box there, but just couldn't make it happen. Here come the Devils. We have Cowles, and she mistouches that ball. That one goes out, and possession will go back in favor of the Rovers. So now the Rovers having a chance to slow it down, start it from start from square one. Dessa, that ball gets intercepted. A grid slide there, but unfortunately Buak didn't hit anybody. Didn't get the ball or didn't get a man. Didn't get anybody, and that ball gets knocked out. And Rovers ball. The wind's starting to pick up here at J.C. Massey Field. Clearing it over, excellent through ball, but unfortunately that one just kind of died off, maybe got a deflection. And Yasmin Jamison will get a goal kick. Rolls the ball out to the left side defense. Clearing in, quick pass along the uh, along the out the boundary there. Down to the back. Trying for me for a slice up there, and she's gonna have to try to run out for it as Jameson battling there with Donker, and I think Donker was not gonna want to face the wrath of, of Jameson. She came in there with a head of steam. And there's a danger of trying to play out from the back. You know, it was a good press there by the Blue Devils, um, and it, it 
they really cut off the passing lanes for the uh, for the Rovers, and then they lost possession, and then they nearly had an opportunity on goal. Yeah, and some fantastic. They'll try it again, trying to send Cowles up the far wing. In defense, there is Esprit. Knocked out, ball will go in favor of the Blue Devils. She had to make the play, had to knock that ball out because the, the pressure was starting to mount. That's some great moves, great footwork. In front, trying to get maybe something out to the side there. Moving in now is Shug. And that ball goes out. But some great play by Jesse Shug. First chance we've talked about her uh, this afternoon. And Shug will get the throw in. Expertly taken. Flicks the ball up and knocked away by the Rovers. And that's cleared out into the uh, out boundaries. Off the Rovers player, last, uh, last person to touch it. She's getting ready for a, I saw the, I saw the hand motion. She's getting ready for a, a hard throw and a long throw. Lands right onto the feet, shot comes in, but it's deflected away. Taking it now, knocked away through the center. She had the right idea, but unfortunately stolen away. Melhado knocks that ball in, maybe trying to find someone downfield, but Jameson called for it and has it in her arms. Yeah, the Blue Devils seem to be now playing a little bit higher up and really trying to box in the Rovers. Lee shovels the ball through. Lee back now for Udenberg. Centers it out to the corner. Shot comes in onto the foot of a blue, of a of a rover. Shot off the crossbar. An excellent play, but just too high. A little bit of frustration there, but yeah, it was a great first touch out the feet, and then to get that strike off, great effort. Very unlucky. Just a little bit, maybe about a foot or so down that would have been barred down in the goal. And Lampadula gets saved by the goalie's best friend, the crossbar. And La Lapadula going for the long kick, gets that right about center field, but Malhado there to clear it away. Back for the Rovers. The head of steam, that's Esprit. Esprit calling for it, center field, that's Udenberg, but Esprit elects to hold on. She's continuing to hold it around the bottom line, and finally, that ball might get knocked out. Yes, it does. And that goes right, uh, right for the Rovers, so excellent individual effort by Trinity Esprit. Knocking that ball back out. That one goes in favor of the Rovers. I believe that ball might have been knocked out of the uh, <laughs> the stadium. It gets in the parking lot. Yeah, we need a new ball, it seems. But what a great turnout. A fantastic crowd here, a gorgeous day. This is kind of what you want for football here in Canada. You know, it's always really cold. It's always really rainy. But to have a day like this, it's a dream come true for the staff here. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing day. What a, what a great day. You know, the atmosphere is, atmosphere is fantastic. You know, great support. And it's amazing for local football. It's great for the, great for the community. And like I said, it's only just going to grow. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get better. You know, so uh, what a great opening day this is. Rovers were caught offside. But it looks like they might be, uh, the referee might be going back on the foul from earlier. So that will be Rover's ball. So it was a bit of an egregious challenge there uh, by, I believe that was uh, Yaku. As here's Udenberg. She finds Devlin and the ball is knocked out. And I believe that will go, yes, to Lapadula for the uh, Blue Devils. Well, the referees doing a fantastic job of letting the players play. Not too many, not too much interference, not too many calls. Been yeah. a very, very, very clean game. Yeah, just let the game flow, you know, and that's what it's about, you know. We don't want this stop and start, stop and start, you know, it breaks up the game, but the refs doing a fantastic job just letting it flow, letting the players play, and then if it needs to get brought back, then the refs done that, you know. So it's been a it's been a great job so far. Excellent vision and turned over for the Rovers. They have possession of the ball. Some excellent speed 
Excellent moves, Nickel. Putting the through ball in for Dessa. And Brienne Dessa sends Esprit. Here come the Rovers. Cross ball, and maybe if she was a few inches taller, she could have had the header, but just over the head of Sawula. And a challenge there is falling down out of play. Yeah, just a little bit too much on the cross there, but you know what, getting in them bright positions now, it's a couple of times, um, and doing a great job. So, you know, just take a little bit off out of the cross next time, and you never know, the opportunity might arise for a, uh, for a goal. Shug wanted the card, or wanted a booking or a foul, but she didn't get one. Giving a little bit of frustration to the referee. As the Blue Devils making their way up the pitch. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one battle here. Donker holds, pulls back, gets a beautiful, uh, beautiful break around Lee. And uh, unfortunately, just couldn't get a handle on that one was Cowles. She had the right plan, had a decent line to get at Yasmeen Jamison, but it just kind of went off her thigh. A bit of an odd touch, and Jamison was able to corral that one in. The footwork there, though, to get that ball in, you know, in that 1v1 situation, use that improv improvisation then to take on the defender and then get that cross in. That was fantastic play. Absolutely very impressive play so far in this first 33 minutes. Here come the Blue Devils, but Esprit is there on the defending to get that ball away. Centers it in front to Rowe. Nickel sends it out in the middle to Lee. That's Cooper Lee. And Cooper Lee has the uh, the hot pink uh, the hot pink boots there. Very one of the most recognizable boots on the pitch. You can always tell where she is. Yeah, can't a, miss break, her. a break for Donker, but an excellent chance by the defense to just knock that ball away. Abby Rowe, she was on it. In what seemed like a, a centering shot for Donker, one you don't see very often in soccer. But we'll take a look at the replay there. As that was the foul there, it looks like she just slipped. And that ball went out. Whistle blows as that shot goes into the center. Nickel. And that's a pretty risky turnover as Docker, she's got a chance. Docker the shot, but unfortunately playing a bit of the wrong football as that one goes through the uprights of the field goal. Yeah, it was just leaning back a little bit there when she had the opportunity. She just needed to get her head over the ball, strike through it. Um, but you know what? That's a warning sign. That's a warning sign there for the Rovers. You know, the uh, the Blue Devils can come here now and uh, count quickly, get into them attacking options, and you know what? They've got to be switched on for it. No, uh, Kiyosha Donker has an absolute hard shot, but she's got really good control of it. Just got a little bit too much under that one as the ball goes up into the arms of Lapadula, who knocks it away to the side to Melhado. Melhado just dipsy doodles around Sawula. And Melhado gets that ball down. Rowe is on that one. Esprit also there. Ball comes up through the center. Running for it now is Sawula. And an egregious challenge there. Sawula is down. Take a look at that one again. Sawula had her beat, but right oh, there. That's fantastic defending. Great 1v1 defending there. Referees, another player down. That's on the Blue Devils. Sawula got back up. Took a bit of a tumble, but it looks like the Blue Devils player is down on the pitch. They're going to call for the Blue Devils trainer. Could be possibly a hamstring or maybe uh, an ankle, but they're going to go. Looks like they're getting the sub ready. Some substitutions ready to come on. Waiting in the wings there is Sarah Shamali, the midfielder. She's ready to go just in case the player has to come off. And here she comes. Shamali's on the field. Oh, excuse me. At number 21, that's Yasmin Vilgrain. She's on the pitch. And having a little brief discussion with the coach. Uh, that was Julia Listro. And we'll get some word on the injured player shortly. But the first time we've seen Jasmine Vilgrain tonight. And a shot comes in, and they score! Oh my goodness! 
what an absolute cracker that was you know as soon as he got the ball had a look touch out the feet and then strike what an absolute beauty of a goal that was we'll take a look at the replay you said they needed something special and from the top of the 18 yard box a great strike i think lapadula maybe for a second there thought that was going to go over so we're looking about 27 yards out there you can see as soon as come touch head up straight away and then pulls the trigger absolute unbelievable strike into the top corner roll is up one nil Alyssa nickel showing why she is one of the top players here in simcoe county an excellent excellent strike and i am i'm sure lapadula will want that one back just how quickly this can change as the rovers found themselves nearly down one nil and now they will take the lead Alyssa nickel and you, can the opening strike. and you can see now the confidence coming through the rovers here this goal it's really really brought out a lot of confidence in them on the ball An excellent sliding challenge there coming from Samua. Now for the fans at home this is an artificial turf and in your experience jake what are some of the big differences between artificial turf and a real grass pitch so with the artificial you know for uh for defenders if, that, if they're letting that ball bounce you know it's uh it's very difficult the ball is going to bounce a lot higher and um, so you really can't let that ball if there's if there's a direct ball coming out over the top there's no way you can let that ball bounce because it's going to move a lot faster Definitely on the real grass. It's, it, it's a topic of a topic of controversy. I know that in a lot of high-level football, some players prefer the real grass. Other players prefer the pitch. But I think we can all agree that it's a gorgeous day and it's a great game. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful day, and the game is uh, incredible so far. You know, both teams doing really well. Uh, going back to when I used to play, though, I used to love playing on grass field. Yeah, you're, and hailing from Manchester, one of the biggest uh, football communities in the UK. I mean, Manchester City, Manchester United, uh, two of the biggest heavyweights there in the uh, English Premier League. That's correct, you know, and uh, it's uh, it's a massive, massive footballing community. You live, you breathe and, and stuff. And you know what, we, we always played on, uh, on fields when we were there. Yeah, it's mean Jameson slowing the ball down, had a little bit of a little bit of challenge, uses the cannon, knocks that one away to Cooper Lee. And the through ball comes in just off the top of the head. That was for uh, Mayu, stolen away. Ball comes in and Lapadula not looking to cry, make that same mistake again. She comes running out, tells the players to back off as she takes that ball for herself. Yeah, good communication from the goalkeeper. And that's what you want. The defenders need to feel very comfortable and comfortable and confident in their goalkeeper at the back, you know, and the communication is key. Here come the Blue Devils. A nice chip over the head. That was uh, Jivan Yaku. And Cooper Lee fouled a little bit too hard. The ball walks out, and that will go in favor of the Rovers. Listening into some of the uh, some of the banter there, definitely some of the players not too happy with that last uh, last call. Right behind the look pass, but it's just picked off. Lee trips to the ball, but earned it right back. Was Nickel a desperate challenge by Laura Twiddle? Unfortunately, couldn't get anything on that one. Here come the Rovers. Looking to make it 2-0. Desperate. And just couldn't get the cross going the way she wanted. Yeah, a little bit of a waste there. When you're getting in them opportunities, you need to get that ball into the box there. Um, but it happens, you know, and next time she's going to get it into the box. You never know what's going to happen. A big day, and honestly, one of the, the ownership group of this team, as I mentioned before, uh, led by Julian de Guzman, former Canadian national team member, a member of Toronto FC, the Ottawa Fury. And uh, coming up at halftime, uh, Jake and I had the opportunity to talk to the man himself and what his expectations are this season. So stay tuned at halftime uh, for the exclusive with club president Julian de Guzman. As the Rovers 
The Rovers hold back, looking. Cross comes in, but a great defensive effort. Picked up now. Here comes Jesse Shug, looking to try to get something up going. And the Rovers say no thank you. And they uh, keep that ball for themselves. Rowe. Rowe, some excellent, excellent digging to get that ball up onto the feet of Sewula. Pass didn't have enough force on that one and easily picked off, but a slow ball just slowly rolls onto the feet of Marlene Sewula. Ball is cleared in. And the defense score takes it out as it looks like Sewula might be favoring one of her legs. Yeah, it looks like she's taking a little knock on the uh, on the right knee there. She is not doing too hot. Uh, she's trying to push through the pain, but you can see she is struggling. So hopefully she'll be able to get some attention from the trainer at halftime and be back in this one. But Mayu clears it out. And for the first time tonight, or this afternoon, I should say, the uh, Rovers continuing to pre mount pressure, and the momentum shifted off that early goal by uh, Nickel. Well, like I said, as soon as, as, as that goal went in, the confidence you could see just grew in the players, you know, when the, the chairs feeling a lot more confident on the ball, more comfortable, and they're playing some fantastic football now. And a shot comes in, was going wide, but Lapadula makes the wise choice to slide out, grab that ball. And down again on the side of the pitch there is Sawula. Looks like the team will probably get a substitution ready shortly. As she is in an immense amount of discomfort. Whistle blows for Sawula. And the trainer comes out to attend to the injured player. like that will be all she wrote for Marlene Sewula heartbreaker a heartbreaker yeah I think it was the uh, the right knee but she's causing a little bit of discomfort with there uh, that's unfortunate it's a shame that she has to, to come out of the game you know just uh, at the tail end of the first half and they will prepare as substitute but they're gonna give her a chance maybe to iron that one out as it looks like they will play a uh, player down for a few minutes. Getting some attention from the trainer as the Simcoe County Rovers give up a corner. Samaya Buyak, she's been moved back towards uh, covering for, covering for her fallen comrade. And in front, the cross possibly coming in and some excellent defending. But the danger is not cleared. A good shot. And up and over. Boom. And that's what you want to see from your defenders, putting your body on the line there. That was fantastic defending by the Rovers. Full commitment, making sure that ball wasn't going in the back of the net. Yep, and currently the, currently the Rovers playing with 10 men, or 10 players, I should say, as... Uh, Sawula gets the medical attention. And a through ball, running after it. But Shug wasn't there. And that will be all she wrote for the first half. No stoppage time. As what, a, really, what a great first half we saw so far here. And the goal coming from Alyssa Nickel that I don't know if anyone was expecting. But the Simcoe County Rovers will head into the halftime break here up 1-0. Yeah, what an absolute thunderbolt that was to, to get the Rovers 1-0 up. Uh, overall, absolute fantastic game of football from uh, from both teams. Um, and it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the, uh, the Blue Devils come out in the second half. We will take a short break and we will be right back for the second half.
Simcoe County, the inaugural game of the Simcoe County Rovers, uh, Rovers this season. And we're joined by club president and former Canadian men's national player, Julian de Guzman. Julian, it's taken a lot of work to get to this point and talk about what the fans can expect this season. Uh, excitement, you know, finally football's arrived in the Haronia district and Her and Barry and, uh, you know, learning about the community and the demand of soccer in this area when there's 17 or 10,000 kids that play the sport, 17 different clubs in the region and, you know, there hasn't been anything that involves professionalism or professional sports for soccer. So this gives a new platform for the, uh, for the, for the region and a lot of young kids who have stopped playing soccer at the age of 15, 16. They now have something to look up to and I think it's been great to, to finally be a part of something like this and it's always been a dream as a player to be involved in an organization post-career when it comes to soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. So how did this project come about then? Yeah, I mean, this takes me back to 2014. Uh, League One just started and it was a lot of, uh, you know, learning about the, the grassroots of soccer in Canada. Mind you, I've played soccer abroad for, you know, 13, 14 years and didn't really know much about soccer in Canada until I came back home and played for the Ottawa Fury. After that, I learned about the things that needed to be done in terms of improving the sport at a grassroots level. And then finally, you know, when you fast forward to, to today, you know, it took a lot of relationship building, but also homework in terms of what needs to happen for the sport at a grassroots level. And, you know, you target this area buried. I mean, it's a fast growing population and there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, new new faces coming to the to the region and soccer has always been a, a discussion, but what's the next step? And that's where I said, okay, this is how an interesting, you know, play that, that will work very well for not just myself, but other individuals, you know, such as Atiba Hutchinson, Janine yeah. Becky, Daniil Henry, Kyle Laren. These guys have played the sport. They love the sport, but how do they give back? So I de de decided to take the lead on that. You know, worked with Peter Racco, uh, Will DeVillis of uh, Barry Soccer as well. And we've come together to, to build this over the course of two, almost two years. And finally, it's happening. We're seeing soccer here in this region, beautiful weather. And it's definitely a dream come true. Yeah, I mean, it's been a huge year for Canadian soccer, qualifying for the World Cup in Qatar this season. And League One is such an important league as they've now been affiliated with the Canadian Premier League. And what does that add to the professionalism of this league and what the players can expect on the field? Yeah, it's that connection, you know, being able to have, you know, a pathway for the players to play their grassroots soccer, play for their local clubs but then finally have that next jump, which is a semi-pro league. And this, the League One has done a great job. I think it, it's, it's great for us to enter ourselves in this, at this division. Maybe we have the dreams in the next three to four years to be in the CPL. But I think the first steps is building the pillars, getting ourselves involved with the community, learning about what needs to be done, learning about what the community also wants. And I think the first steps of having a League One team such as Simcoe County Rovers in Barrie is the first big step. And League One has done a great job on in terms of, you know, in the next two years, there's going to be a promotion relegation. You know, for your average soccer fan, when they talk about promotion relegation, mm -hmm. you know, that's some of the most exciting things, oh, yeah. you know, to follow. And, you know, in 2024, you're going to see a promotion relegation uh, platform. So it's a matter of us doing well in the first two years of this uh, of this project because 2022, 2023, they're going to accumulate the points and then they'll create that promotion relegation. Top 12 teams from the men's and women's will be in that top division mm -hmm. and then they'll start to make the other divisions uh, from the League One Champion or League One Premier Top Division, League One Championship and then below they'll have a League Two division. So we want to finish the top 12 but it would also be great to bring back a trophy. Yeah, amazing, mate. And uh, what can we expect from uh, both teams today, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've put together a, a, a great squad in terms of the men's and women's competing you know in this league we don't want to just participate you mm -hmm. know if, if you talk about again the guys that are involved as, as owners these guys have won trophies and you know they're built champions and we want to be able to build champions in this community as well so uh, the women's side you know Audra she's a sporting director and she has been able to put together an all-star group of players you know this, this is going to be their first time playing together uh, for Simcoe County Rovers so it's going to be you know maybe rougher in the first maybe 15 20 minutes maybe yeah. the first game but over the course of the season I think we're going to be a team that wants to compete for a trophy and and uh, I think for the men's as well you know there's a lot of all-star players that we've put together guys who have played professionally in the CPL guys who have you know have the aspirations of being pro uh, so we want to put them together but Jason Beckford who wrote, who's the yeah. head manager of the team you know he has the experience professionally as a manager overseas he has played for Manchester City you know as a professional player in his pastime now he's here putting together one of the best teams in the league on paper it's a matter of us performing so the objective let's finish top six you finish top six both in the men's and women's that puts you in the playoffs you finish top four 
that allows you to host a playoff match, which is, uh, I think, one of the biggest objectives for this season. And then after that, anything could happen, you know, with regards to winning yeah. a trophy. Yeah, a huge day. And, you know, thank you so much for being with us. And good luck this season. And we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to J.C. Massey Field at the half. The Rovers have the 1-0 lead. And before the game, we had a chance to speak to Audra Sherman, the director of the Rovers FC women's team. And we will jump to that right now. So Rover FC is um, a semi-pro team that uh, plays in League One. Um, so, yeah. What are we about? We're about uh, putting the best product on the fields um, and try to create opportunities for our men's and women's side uh, and move them on to a pro environment. So all our players uh, come from U Sport or NCAA, um, and we also have like uh, you know post university players usually from the GTA area. So we're looking at from all the way from Oshawa, all the way to Orangeville and Scarborough. So all over the GTA. The success of women's football in our, our country, especially with the gold medal um, in the Olympics. Uh, yeah, that's right now we've been taught for many, many years, um, but that's a pinnacle, right, is a gold medal. So I think now is the time to capitalize on it. So we have to make those moves. Um, I think we're part of that process, right? We're a semi-pro organization. Um, I'd like to see that this is how the that next level is being brought up, right? So we have to have a pro league. And I think it's kind of, uh, I want to say a no-brainer that it has to come out of an already established league like League One. Um, I mean, we're League One BC as well, and, and Quebec is the only next step, right, is how do we do it, you know, professionally, nationwide. I mean, there's no excuse now, right? So we have to, we're, we found success, but to sustain success, at that international level, uh, we have to have a domestic league, right? So, so building the team was, uh, a, a, as our first year, um, it was kind of strategic in the sense that we focused on post-university players that actually had connections to certain universities, um, and also you, you sport players, which actually were able to merge together because they kind of play against each other all the time. So a core of it did come from um, certain universities. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's a very short timeline for preseason because they're still in school, they're having exams, and then we only have a, about one or two weeks. Um, so, and the season is actually, the League One season actually uh, works within the university um, time frames as well. So. Um, yeah, we're just going to go week by week. It's just going to get stronger and stronger. So that's how we're building. I think for today's game, um, because it was the first time that we were together collectively, I think uh, staff did great. Uh, you know, our head coach did a great job. Uh, collectively, everybody worked together. It just got better and better. Every, you know, minute of the game just kind of had our players gelling and really performing well. So. Yeah, I think that's the thing is we, in whatever level it is, like I think the TV, watching it like live versus on TV is totally different. It is a speed uh, change. Um, but then you get to see everything. When you're watching on TV, uh, you're basically watching what is being captured. Whereas live, you could focus. There's so many elements of the game that you could focus on and you, your own eyes could choose to see what you see, right? Um, and then not only that, then you're the fans and you like everything about like the environment is what really creates it. Whereas if you're at home, you're kind of, you're in your living room and it's just you, maybe a family member. So there's that excitement about being live that's really, you know, changes the whole experience. 
hundred percent. Yeah, it's going to be nice to see what we've kind of created when you build something from the foundation on, um, and not knowing kind of the league as much and and not knowing how it turned out. I think it's just exciting. Whatever we do is going to be great. I I, I believe we have a great staff. We have great players. Great organization. So. And welcome back to J.C. Massey Field here at Georgian College. And for those just tuning in, Simcoe County took the lead one to nothing on a 27-yard strike by number 27, Alyssa Nickel. What an unbelievable goal that was. You know, it was as soon as that ball came into her feet, it was touch out, looked up, and then just fired top bins. Unbelievable goal. Uh, and the first goal in the history of Simcoe County FC. Incredible way, lit up the crowd, and I think a lot of people were a bit confused. I think they thought that ball was going over, but a, gre a great strike that I'm sure Elisa Lapadulo will want back. But both teams have been playing excellent so far tonight, or this afternoon, sorry. Not, man not many mistakes, but a little bit more rough challenges we saw near the end of the half. Yeah, towards the end of the half, I mean, the ref did a great job there letting the game flow. Um, but there was a little bit of frustration uh, creeping in uh, on the Devils' side as well, just trying to get the ball back because the Rovers, they grew in the game. And as soon as that goal came in, the confidence what was uh, coming off the players was unbelievable, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I can't wait for the second half. It's going to be great. Yeah, we'll take a look at a few of the uh, highlights from the first half. It all seemed to be from the defensive core of the Blue Devils. I mean, uh, uh, Melhado has been on it for covering everything, and there's not too many really good chances for the Oakville Blue Devils, but they've been dangerous. They've had a couple that have just gone over, gone wide, gone high. Um, but for the uh, Pinto County Rovers, just like this one we've seen here, they've been on it. They've given the pressure to Lapadula, and it just took a few, uh, just one chance to them, and they got the ball in. Yeah, and like I said in the first half, you know, the uh, the Rovers have been looking to penetrate down the left-hand side quite a lot of time. And then also on the right-hand side as well, they were looking to attack the full-backs and get the ball in early. Um, but I've got to say, I've been really impressed with the uh, with the Blue Devils and the way they keep possession, uh, the organisation they've got at the back in defence. But it was, it was an absolute wonderful goal to put the Rovers ahead. Uh, and it's, it was something something spectacular, you know? Although we did have a lot of positives in this first one, we did unfortunately uh, lose one of the Blue Devil players to injury. Uh, she was subbed out uh, for number 21, Jasmine Vilgrain. We'll get a confirmation on who that was, as well as number seven, Marlene Sawula on the Rovers was experiencing some severe discomfort on possibly the hamstring. Uh, we'll see if she's back. Uh, we hope she's back in the uh, second half, but we will make sure to see that. Uh, what a devastating loss, though. Sawula has been an absolute, really hard worker. Yeah, you know what? Absolute great first half. And you know what? They didn't make the change. You know, they uh, they wanted to get in at half time and then, you know, treatment and see what they could do, possibly get her out for the second half. So we'll see if she returns. Yeah, I see her there walking onto the pitch. She appears to be in a bit more uh, bit more spirits. So we'll see if she uh, comes back on. She looks to continue. I don't think she's going to want to go down go down without a, a significant fight. Yeah, she's a trooper. She'll be uh, she'll be raring to go to come out for the uh, for the second half, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if we did see her uh, starting the second half. The Oakville Blue Devils, one of the more famous clubs in the League One on both the men's and women's side and following this match we will see the men's teams take on each other in the uh, first game ever for the Simcoe County Rovers. Uh, President Julian Guzman was here earlier but he had to head off for I believe a TSN broadcast. So how cool is that to have such royal Canadian royalty uh, working with this club and that's it you know it's it's amazing to see to come out a player of his stature kind of thing to come out support the community support support local football you know you, you wouldn't see that normally and you know it's uh, it's amazing to see that he came out supported showed and uh, yeah unbelievable and with league one being in the feeder system now for the canadian premier league i mean two or three excuse me great seasons already uh two championships by forge and one by pacific they're looking at promotion relegation something you're very familiar over with in europe and and how amazing would that be for a club like barry to work or simcoe county to work up the ladder like we've seen in the past uh, over in england germany and uh 
countries like that. Yeah, and that's I love the format. I love the the, the promotion, the the relegation. It adds the excitement to it, you know. And then the the battle of uh, the two ends of the table, you know. It's uh, it's it's great to watch, you know. You see it in the Premier League, you see it in the Bundesliga, and so forth, you know. When you've got the tale of uh, two stories, you know, you've got the the battle for the top, and then the battle at the bottom to keep in the league. So it's a great format, and you know what? It's uh, it's great to see that it's coming over into to the Canadian football. And here we go. Moments away from kickoff. Here they go. The Rovers have possession and they will be playing into the wind for this uh, second half. So we'll see what they can manage. As the ball's played up the wing there, the Rovers starting to attack. And back in the game, Sawula making her statement known as that will go out for a corner kick. Ironically enough, one of the very first corner kicks we've seen for the Rovers. So we'll see what they can do. Taking it will be 14, Adrian Devlin. Well, they've come out the box quickly here, you know, straight away. Only a few seconds into the second half and the corner straight away, putting the uh, the Devils under pressure. And a beautiful cross comes in, looking for the header, but Lapadula read that one like a book and manages to roll the ball up to uh, another uh, changed player in here is Hilda Shemait. She has come into this match. Number 17, the first time we've seen her. So taking advantage of the substitutes so far uh, for the Blue Devils as coming in now is Donker. Donker, some great footwork, excellent footwork, but just come to nothing. Just did a little bit too much with the ball. She just needs to get her head up there, have a look for one of her teammates. Uh, and now has lost possession and now the, uh, the rolls are on the counter. And here come the Rovers. So they're looking to possibly, here is an excellent cover strike and just over the goal. An excellent shot from Chloe Udenberg and that one seemed painted for the top corner, but just a little bit too high. Yeah, she was just a little off balance when she struck the ball and that's why it was, uh, she got the elevation on it. She didn't have the right balance, just get her body over the ball and strike through, but overall great effort. Absolutely sublime and nearly put the team up by two. And we can confirm that one of the players that was subbed out uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the period uh, half there was number nine, Jesse Shug, on the uh, on the Blue Devils. She might have been the injured player we saw there. The forward uh, went down, so a uh, big loss there for the Blue Devils. The wind starting to pick up ever so much more. Yeah, and this might have a, have an effect on how the uh, the Rovers are going to play. They might have to keep the ball on the ground a little bit more. I know that in the first half we were looking for a lot of direct balls going out to the out to the wing and so forth and in behind. Uh, so they might have to keep the ball on the ground a little bit more in this second half. And an excellent clearance by Melhado. Rachel Melhado has the iron boot for the Blue Devils. But here they come. Nickel, she's got Sawula. An excellent centering cross for Udenberg, but that's knocked away by Sierra. And they'll corral it back, that's Cooper Lee. Cooper Lee, excellent two touches there, trying to get it around, but unfortunately gets stripped of the ball. The defense pushes up, as here comes Donker. Donker trying to get it back, she does, Yaku. And the Rovers are there to knock that one away, Udenberg. But it misplays that ball. And it comes right back onto the feet, but two interceptions in a row, one for each side, as they're still continuing to be a bit more disorganized. Yeah, you could see what she was trying to do, just get the ball down there, but just uh, wasn't able to, to get the technique and get the pass off. Um, but it is, you know, the, the ball's been uh, bouncing between both teams so far in this, uh, in this second half. Keeping it back now. They're still trying to make something happen. Two, two players there, but she goes right around them. Bulak has got Esprit. Centering ball for Nickel. Nickel so far has the golden goal to put the team ahead. 
And I can also confirm that the other player who is out of the lineup for the Blue Devils, number 14, Kaylee Cowles, she has been taken off. So a forward and a defender have been uh, subbed out uh, for Vilgrain, the midfielder, and Shemite, the defender. So hopefully uh, they're not too injured, and hopefully maybe it was a strategic change as it'd be absolutely devastating to lose uh, two very, very strong players uh, earlier this season. Yeah, hopefully nothing serious, and they can uh, make a speedy recovery and get back to the get back to the field as soon as possible. And Lampadula, as you can see in the back of the camera shot there, the flags are there as it looks like the Barbarians uh, have invaded J.C. Massey Field. Uh, I, I love the name. I love the, I love puns, and I can safely say that is one of my favorites so far. Yeah, they're turning up in force. You know, they're, they're here to support the team, and it's great to see. It's, it almost seems you can't have a soccer club anywhere without a designated group of crazy supporters that are going to possibly break noise ordinance laws and uh, get, get, the, get the streamers out. Yeah, can only guarantee. As here come the Blue Devils. That's Sierra. She's got a head of steam. Oh, and off the head of the, that's number eight, Abby Rowe, rung her bell just a little bit, but played it off like stone cold, no reaction. Through ball tried to come in, but nothing, nothing got, nothing got going, unfortunately. As there's Cooper Lee, or excuse me, uh, Sawula. And uh, a heavy, heavy shot, a heavy cross there. Managed to be corralled in by the Blue Devils, but she'll let that ball roll out for a free uh, throw in. And wearing the captain's armband is uh, number 15. That's Rachel Melhado. Like definitely, definitely a very deserving player of the armband for the um, Blue Devils, and a very good leader on the back, uh, on the back, uh, on the back defense. As the Blue Devils trying to get a through ball up, but that nickel is there to defa defeat that challenge. Up the wing. And it looks like the arm's gone up on the far referee there. Linesman has called an offside. Yeah, just straight off, but you can see the roll was straight off about here now. They are putting pressure on, so we're not allowing the uh, the Blue Devils any time on the ball. And this is how they want to play. They want to keep possession, so when they're put under that pressure, you know, it's making it very difficult for them to play them little triangles, play them patterns of play. And, you know, for some for some fans who might be coming over from hockey or from basketball, uh, an offside in soccer is, is different because you can actually be in your own side and get booked for an offside. So it's a quite a unique uh, a unique rule. Yeah, that, that rule keeps changing and changing, and uh, it's one of them. I, I quite don't know what it is these days anymore with the amount of uh, decisions that they and, and changes they make to it. An excellent pick from Shemate in center for Donker, but Nickel is there, and... Almost a shot there, diving for it was Jamison. They will call it a corner kick. Yeah. What a dangerous challenge. Yeah, she's trying to shepherd the ball out and waiting for a keeper to come and claim that ball there. Um, so she must have heard the shout or she's wanting to come here. And it's, it's for me, one of them, if in doubt, you need to put it out. And a good, uh, a good cross in. And the shot in. Just wide, cleared away, back to the shot taker, but that will go out for a throw in. Excellent there, that's why you always keep a defender on the line, just in case the goalie's out of position, and an excellent clearance. A very good throw in, but it is taken away by the Rovers, as here they come with a head of steam. The through ball comes in, pushed off. Mayu. Gets it back, clears back to the goaltender. And they go back and forth, playing a little a little hot potato with the ball. Lapidula. And she elects to go for her far winger. Goes for Yaku. That ball gets knocked out. Yeah, and the Rovers did really well there at keeping the shape and not letting them play out from the back there, which was great to see. And a turnover, a risky turnover with a head of steam. Here comes Abby Rowe. She gets stopped up by Melhado. And the player goes down. Melhado fouled quite hard by Abby Rowe. 
Slow to get up, but she's back on her feet. No booking as the Blue Devils were hoping for something. The physicality has started to pick up, and I am quite surprised as there is a substantial height difference between Melhado and Abby Rowe. But it doesn't matter how tall you are, as long as you can make the clean challenge. A good clearance downfield by Lapadula. The Rovers jumped on that ball, pounced on it, but gave possession right back to Shemite. Turned the ball back over. Esprit clearing it to the center, and that one's almost picked off. It is picked off. And goes back the other way comes Bridow. That's a player we haven't mentioned it today. Over Lydia Bridow. One of the midfield players for the Blue Devils. Trying to make something happen, but Alyssa Nickel making her case for woman of the match. She has been all over. She is one of the hardest working players on the Rovers roster so far. And a bit of a misplay. And that will be knocked out for a, for I believe a corner kick, maybe a throw in. I think it was a throw in. Maybe a throw in. The, 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 the fine lines. Yeah, right, right at the corner flag. The fine lines where you just wish it was maybe an inch or two, an inch or two to the uh, other side. So we'll see what they can get going. The Blue Devils in and mounting a challenge on Yasmin Jamison. As number seven, Marlene Sawula, she's decided she can't play anymore. The injury is a bit too much for her. And entering the game is Leah Foster, number 21. So a great addition to the forward line then. But Marlene Sabula, what a trooper, as you mentioned earlier, for really pushing through that injury. She gave it everything she had. Yeah, she did, you know, and it was uh, it was it was great to see her come out at the second half, try and put everything uh, on the line for her team. But you know what? Uh, the body's telling her that it's, it's, it's time to come off. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not like a video game where you can just sim in a couple weeks and you'll be fine. You've got to make sure you're, you're healthy for the whole season. Yeah, so hopefully it's nothing serious. Hopefully she'll uh, she'll be able to rest up and she'll be back for the next game. The Shemite gets it into the center. The Blue Devils kind of stuck at midfield. Haven't really been able to get something going. And there they are, just kind of a lazy, a lazy uh, shoot up the up the side there, and easily taken by Trinity uh, Esprit there. And this comes down to the role of the shape, you know, how they've uh, how they've set up here. Um, they're very disciplined, and they're not allowing um, the Rovers to, um, sorry, the Devils to play and get comfortable on the ball. And a good stretch pass, but just a bit too much of stretch and out of the reach of the far forward. And another substitution, number 24, Terry Sisic. She will come in. As off the off the pitch. Oh, we'll get a number check there. Off the pitch comes 17. Samaya Buyak. She is uh, she played great. She dug in. She did a lot of uh, a lot of good playmaking. And it will be unfortunate for her to come off, but she was looking a little tired there near the end of that uh, last run there. So she'll rest up and be A-OK -okay for the next game. So two substitutions used for both uh, both sides. Cooper Lee. Dishes the ball back to keeper Yasmin Jamison. Wind starting to pick up even more. As now it looks like the wind might have changed directions to uh, help out the help out the Simcoe County Rovers a little bit more as a good through ball. They wanted the offside, the shot oh, just wide. What an excellent touch and an excellent pass. Yeah, great little touch over the top there and you could see exactly what she was just trying to do, a little dink over the top, great effort. Welcome to the match, Leah Foster. Her first touch of the game nearly finds the back of the goal. 
you can tell she wants to be in that starting 11, and with an audition like that, I can imagine she'll be moving up the roster very soon. An excellent clearance, a bit over the head of one of the defenders, but in all alone comes Foster. But a good hustle back by Melchado. To, or Melchado, excuse me, to knock that one away. The Rovers mounting a bit of more uh, intense play there in front of the net. Back to the defense. In now through. Foster. Foster, can you even take it? In the front. A bit of an offhand. Nickel will try it again. And that's just up over the goal. That was some really nice football there by the Rovers. You know, a little one touch to, uh, one touch pass in and then just laid off for the for the strike just outside the area. Great effort. And you could see she's just opening up her body, the inside, side foot, and just trying to place it. Doesn't really matter where Anissa, uh, uh, Alyssa Nickel gets the ball. She can convert, as we saw from the 27-yard line. Uh, we saw her get that one to match her jersey number. So the Rovers taking time, taking possession. And they now have started to dominate the second half in terms of opportunities. And I can imagine Elisa Lampadula getting her uh, getting her steps in as she has been having to make some good attempts and good saves and good coverage of the net. As here come the Rovers. They're looking around, trying to make something happen, but it just miscommunication perhaps and tried to find Udenberg, but couldn't get that one to go. And in the counterattack, the Blue Devils almost had it, but Esprit was there, and here they go. A near turnover onto the feet of Aaron Cliff. Those are those are moments where you cannot give a ball away at the top of the 18-yard box. Yeah, that's uh, it's a it's a dangerous place a uh, place to give that ball away there, and kind of got away with one. And down Sisic, first time she's touched the ball tonight. Top for a good strike, and that one goes out of the uh, over the uh, field goal line there. But an excellent an excellent opportunity. First time we've seen a really good shot from the defenseman there. Well, you can see the Rovers are playing with lots of confidence now. They uh, they feel that they're on top of the game. They're very comfortable with the ball at the feet, um, showing some great skills. And you know what? They're getting the shots off, and it's not going to be long before they, uh, they may get another. Yeah, the Rovers making more things, doing more things right than wrong. And that's what you have to do to win these matches. It's a long season. We have a whole summer to go, but if they continue playing the way they are, I can't see any reason why they couldn't take the championship. Well, they've come out in the second half, really, and they're uh, they're playing extremely well right now. Uh, but with uh, with their organization, their shape, their discipline, they're uh, they're putting in a great shift, and it's making it very difficult for the Devils to to get the ball play and how they want to play. You know, it's uh, they're going to have to change, and you're probably going to see they're going to have to start playing a little bit of a a direct ball because they're unable to play with a ball on the ground right now. You know, the ball, the wind has been changing. It seems to be now uh, coming from oh, behind us or so. The winds, just heavy winds, nothing too crazy. Probably a good maybe five, maybe five miles per hour. What a good chance for Sisic to maybe go on a run, but some more miscommunication. Here comes Docker, trying to get the pass up, and the center in, Docker's got it! But the defense clears that one away with finesse. Here come. Oh, the, they had something. And the ball kicks out and goes out of play. And that will be a ball for the for the Rovers. And another offside call, this time going against the Rovers. You can see the Rovers have smelt the blood in the water and they're like sharks on raw meat. They're, they're very, very eager to get going. Yeah, they're relentless, eh? They're just pressing and they... Uh, they're not giving giving the Devils a, a moment to breathe right now. Refs have called for a rethrow. They weren't too 
happy with the placement of that throw. And a good clearance now. Rovers with the ball. Deflection in for Donker. She still got it, but just barely. That palm goes out. Throw in for the Rovers. Good contact. And it's a bit too much on that one. Clears it up over the head, over the head of Esperit. Donker trying to see if he can send Shemite. Good clearance back in for Sierra. And a one-on-one, -on -one, but Yasmin Jameson. Yeah, good starting position by the goalkeeper, you know, and uh, good communication there with the uh, with her central defender as well, and that's what it's all about. The uh, the defenders need to be uh, comfortable and confident in uh, keeper's ability, and it seems like they've got a good uh, understanding, you know, and saying that they've only they've only played together more or less one time. Um, it seems like they're gelling very quick. Oh, for sure. 65 minutes down. Now in the 66th minute of this contest, still 1-0 for the Simcoe County Rovers women's side. Excellent play, good chances on both ends, but the real the story of the show has been the midfield. They have been lots of battles, lots of digging and digging and challenging and trying to get plays going, but it just seems the wind has been such a factor tonight. A nice play outside to the left side. Through ball, didn't go to anybody. And the Rovers, but a pick off. Here they come. An excellent play. Some empty space. Maybe looking to go it forward, but Shemate just couldn't get there in time. And the Rovers will get that clearance out as the Blue Devils will use their third substitution momentarily as Maria Paveda will go into this one, the first time we've seen her. And we'll see momentarily who comes off. As Yasmin Jamison will clear that one up to the side for Esprit as here she comes. She's got some room to run. Deflection off into the center, up to the corner for Cisic. And Cisic having to kind of corral the ball back around was Bradow. And Bradow clears it out to about center field. And the ball goes off the hand, but the referee make, uh, plays the advantage. As the Rovers still have possession, and now back to the Blue Devils. And Udenberg has a chance, but it's just cleared away. The Simcoe County Rovers making their case. But so far, nothing is stuck. The Devils are just really trying, they're finding it difficult to find rhythm. You know, they're uh, they're getting the ball, they're giving away possession straight away, and it's just not clicking right now for him. There's a chance there on the side of the yard box. They clear it in, just out the stretching reaches, and that ball is cleared away. Chasing after it, but that ball goes out of play. And we will have a substitution. As in comes Maria Paveda, and uh, out comes Hilda Shemait. So a, a short, a short stint there for Shemait, but she did manage to get some good opportunities going. Here come the Rovers, trying to center her through, but they were there. The Devils were there, and Sisic. But the ball's turned over on the fast break. Trying to see if she can stretch a run, maybe, for Paveda. Yeah, I think that there was the uh, just the wrong decision. You know, it was it was played way too early, um, and she she needed just to drive that ball a little bit more there for me. Uh, but you can see what she was doing. Absolutely, a good attempt there is a good scrum there between uh, Donker and Esprit. Plays it back now. That's Cooper Lee. Here comes Cooper Lee. She takes it herself. She continues to go. Centers it now. 
A wide open chance. She waits, goes, and just too wide. She had Sisic available on the wing, but a spin and just wide. But I think Alapadula will take a look at the replay there. Some excellent footwork to make that play happen. You know why? It was great play by Lee. Just playing the ball out, very comfortable on the ball, coming out of defense with it, and then creating that opportunity um, for the striker. But it was, it was just a couple of touches, and then just couldn't get her foot wrapped around that ball to, uh, to find a corner. And Lapadula will clear that ball into the wind. As the wind seems to have changed directions here. And Sisic just gets a nice ball into the hands of Lapadula. 69 minutes down, entering the 70th minute. So it is do or die, now or never, for the Blue Devils as they got 20 more minutes, which might seem like a lifetime, but here they come, Paveda. Paveda, excellent footwork. Puts the ball through, trying to find it, but Jamison is there. An excellent through ball to Cliff, but just a little bit too much power, and Jamison was able to get on that wall. Yeah, just a little bit too much weight on the ball, but you know what, great footwork um, by, the, by the striker there to, to try and put the player in. Maria Paveda, she just came in recently, but she's already making an impact here, only about a few minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes into this match already. And the forward doing her dues on this team. Melhado gets along to the side. Here they come, but the Rovers just took the ball away as quickly as it was given. And that ball is cleared up and almost into our cameraman. That is a danger of covering soccer. That the uh, we are we are technically right off the edge of the pitch. Yeah, can't take your eyes off a game, eh? Otherwise, you might get hit in the face there, pal. As it looks like we got a couple more substitutions coming in. This time for the Rovers. Incoming number two, that's Tia Schaefer on the defense. Off comes Esprit. And another player coming in. That will be number 23, Priscilla, Vul uh, Priscilla Vulgais. And uh, off comes number 14, Adrian Devlin. So Vulgais and number two Schaefer come in. What a great play by Esprit. You know, she was a, a really good uh, attacker on the wing there. Doing a lot of really good battles, doing a lot of digging. And honestly, uh, she, uh, she could have had one today. Uh, really good effort. And in comes Vilgrain. And snatching that one away is Jamison. Rolls that ball out to Lee. Lee, centering ball. Taken up for Sisic. But she goes for a diving challenge on Fonker, on Donker there. And Schaefer has the ball, dishes it back to Jamison, the goalie. Dishes it out wide to Lee. Goes for a nice stretch pass. She gets it connected. And she'll try the same thing through the center. But it's just picked off, but a bad bounce off the turf. Here comes Sisic. Tara Sisic, she's got some space in through ball. In for Rowe. Back for Schaefer, and Schaefer will have a go. And it's over the goal. So Tia Schaefer, the defender, winding up and taking, I guess, a metaphorical slap shot from the top of the 18-yard box, but maybe she had a little bit of help there from the uh, impeding defender. Lapadula. Lapadula plays that ball up, and it dies off in the wind. Onto the feet of the Rovers. Here they come, centering that one up for Sisic. Sisic has an opportunity. She waits, she's got some defense there, and that ball's knocked away for a corner kick. Tara Sisic, she is coming out strong. She wants a goal. Coming in as a substitution, she has been putting in the effort to make these plays happen. Yeah, she's looked very bright since she's, uh, she's come off the bench, and uh, she's done really well there to, to get a corner kick for the Rovers. 
the second the secondary player comes in, they will swap out the uh, swap out the kick there. So that goes up, centered in, header in, save Lapadula. A beautiful save by the goaltender. My goodness, that was painted for the back of the goal. Well, what a ball in, what a cross, and then an absolute fantastic header. But I've got to say, hats off to the goalkeeper. Great reaction save, uh, and especially to palm it, away, palm it away and get it out of the danger zone as well. So great keeping overall. Elisa Lapadula, and here we go, another foul there. Charged on the Blue Devils. Referee walking over. Her book stays in her pocket. But Elisa Lapadula making the save of the game to keep this game at 1-0. What an important play. But as you mentioned, a fantastic through ball. They'll try it again. But that's taken away. No dice on that. Ball's cleared away. And the Rovers, shot, dies in traffic. Good block there, unselfish by Sierra. That's one thing I've noticed about this Blue Devils team, very unselfish play. They're willing to toss their bodies in front of the ball. They're willing to go in. They're not really doing too many one-person plays. They're always trying to look for the pass and trying to make a play happen, which I, I really do admire. Yeah, they, they seem like a possession-based uh, team, but it is, they, they've struggled this second half to, for it to click, you know, but that comes down to the, to the Rovers and how well they've set up and been organized, been disciplined on the, on the pitch. Just barely keeping in with Schaefer, but her ball just goes out. Poveda was there to get a little bit of a little bit of razzle dazzle in there, trying to get some pressure. Kept now by Bradow. Mel Hado finds a good pass along the wing. Excellent connection to Sierra. She tries to center it for Donker. The Devils need the tying goal. Time is running out. And here come the Rovers looking to double that advantage. Well, they've been knocking on the door. You know, it could be uh, a moment of time before they uh, they get that goal, that that goal that they need to put this uh, put this game to bed. Because I tell you what, one nil is probably one of the most dangerous scores in football, uh, and especially going into the last uh, ten minutes of like we are now, the uh, the Devils are going to look to really put pressure on the team. And as crazy as it sounds, one goal is the deciding difference between two points, one point, and zero points. Lapadula slows it down, takes a good kick. That one, fortunately, still being still being a bit impressed by the win there. That one kind of just dies off before it hits center field. But Lapadula using her vision to find her players, but the Rovers manages to steal that one back. More gusts of wind to the Blue Devils. They need that tying goal. But it just seems they have not been able really to, they have not been able to challenge uh, Jameson thus far. And a shot comes on to the wing there and just off the header, a good pass to keep it straight. Schaefer plays it back to Jamison, and Jamison clears that one over center field, finds her player downfield, and now the Rovers are back on the attack. It's Sisic. She's got some space. Sisic. She waits, uses the fancy footwork, plays it through the center, and now a shot at the wing there. Shot comes in in front. Play in, they score! Vulgas. She centered it over and waiting in the wings to bury that one. And what a goal. What a goal What that was. A team play. I mean, it was unbelievable. What a fantastic team goal. And then what a finish to, to cap it off. And this is what the Rovers have been pushing for. You've seen all second half. They've come out absolutely raring. And they have been look, looking like they're going to score. And they've put this game to bed, it seems. 2-0. And that strike came in. An excellent, excellent strike. As now make it 2-0 for the home squad. 
but I believe that pass is just a textbook thing of beauty. It was. It was a. It was an overall a, just a great team goal and. Uh, you know, a little bit of one-touch football was in there as well, moving the ball quick and then getting it out wide, that ball in, getting the head up, looking for the looking for the striker in the box. And then, like I said, an absolute fantastic finish, having the composure, open up the body and then finishing in the side of the net. Brilliant goal. As Cliff will head off, she's substituted out and so is number 10, uh, Jivan Yaku. And coming in now is Laura Twiddle and Leanne Forker. For the first time. <laughs> Chloe Udenberg, she gets her goal. We said earlier that she was trying, and now they're looking possibly for a third one. A shot comes in, saved by Lapadula. Oh, the Rovers are smelling blood here right now. They've got the tails up, they're in the mood right now, and it's unbelievable football that they're playing. Great save by the keeper. But and the role was looking here now to add again. Udenberg, she, want, she got her first, and now she wanted her second. But a good uh, good heads-up play by Lapadula there to stick the hands out, block that ball, and make sure it dropped onto her hands. Yeah, great goalkeeping, you know, uh, great reactions. And, uh, yeah, she'll be pleased with that one, you know. I mean, on the, on the two goals, the keeper's not really had any chance to, to save them, but you know what? The Rovers, like I said, they're, they're full of confidence right now and they're playing some fantastic football overall. And I feel for Keosha Donker, she had a really good opportunity there, but just kicked it a bit too far. The Blue Devils, they are really trying. They are really pushing. They, they, they don't want to go home with a goose egg. They want to put at least one goal on the board to break that shutout that Yasmin Jamison is pitching. Well, I tell you what, if they could get a goal in the next few minutes, it's really going to put um, an absolute whirlwind of a finish on to the end of the game. So it's about now capitalising on these opportunities that they have, and it needs to be the right ball in. And unfortunately, that was not the right ball. 80, 80 minutes down, so only less than 10 minutes remaining. So. The Blue Devils need to find something quick, and they need to find something now. As a big foul there, gives a free kick, a dangerous free kick, just at the top of the 18-yard box. Yeah, this is a, this is a dangerous position now. Um, so the, the goalkeeper needs to organize their wall uh, really well, get, the, get them organized know the positions where they need to be and um, but it is it's a dangerous position are they going to go for the for the shot on target are they going to put it on the keeper or are they going to be looking for the the tall players in the box there and i'll tell you one of the, one of the best free kick takers i've seen one of the most famous canadian nationals um one of the most famous canadian national players janine becky who is uh one of the owners here a phenomenal play uh, just too bit too much power but Janine Becky, who is one of the investors here for this club, uh, she's one of the, she was one of the best uh, free kick takers uh, points there. Lapadula coming out of her net just a little bit more. Yeah, that was a little bit of a wasted opportunity there for the Blue Devils. I think uh, they've not really had too many chances, and when you're in positions like that, they've got to capitalize on it. You know, they've got to put it on the keeper, test the keeper, make the keeper work. Um, but they've not really done that, you know, and they've, they've really got to capitalise, like I said, when they're in these positions. With only only eight minutes on the clock now to go, they've really got to try and find a goal uh, to put the uh, the rollers under pressure and try and get something from this game. Still time. Crazier things have happened. As the Blue Devils, under eight minutes remaining, but Schaefer picks that ball off. She's got a head of steam. Maybe looking to find Cisic. Cisich, too much power on that one, but excellent footwork, excellent footwork to keep that ball in, and they were rewarded with the throw-in. So one more player coming in. That'll be number 22, Ashlyn Coley. And a shot in front of the goal, they score! Oh my goodness! Make it three to nil! What an absolute finish! What an absolute rifle that was! Unbelievable strike! And that game has now 
been put to bear. The ball comes in there. What a great first touch. And then get the body over the ball and strikes it into the roof of the net. What an absolute finish. And I tell you what, there's no way back now for the Blue Devils. But I've got to say, the Rovers, the second half, they have just controlled the game. They've come out absolutely raring and they've played an unbelievable first opening game. And how about that for the substitute, Leah Foster came into this game late in the second half and put up her first goal as a member of the team. What an impact she's had on the game since coming, but so have all the subs. And I think the manager's got the uh, the changes here spot on all the way through the game. And also the tactics, you know, they, uh, they've they organised, the tactics have been spot on and they've not allowed the Blue Devils to play how they want to play. Absolutely, a good challenge there for the Blue Devils, just wasted as the ball trickles wide. And this is what we've, what we've said all through the game, that they've not capitalised on their chances, what they've got. And this is an opportunity right there where, you know, they've got to be hitting the target, you know. You never know. Five minutes, six minutes to go there, you get one. It starts to creep into the mind of the defenders, into the goalkeeper, you know. So then that's where now a bit, little bit of nerves come in. So they've got to take chances when they come. A bit of a late foul there. Just tripping up Foster. Referee gives the free kick for the Rovers, just past half field. But you, you got to feel for Elisa Lapadula. She's done so many things right today, and for those goals, nothing she could do. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. All, all three goals have been uh, have been highest quality, really, by the by the Rovers today. And uh, like, like you said, the keepers the keepers done no chance on any of them. She's been playing excellent. Both goalies have been playing excellent. And what would that mean for Yasmin Jameson in her first game here with the Rovers to pitch a shutout? It's always uh, it's always something you want to see. Clean sheets. Yeah, do you know what? When I was playing as a as a goalkeeper, that was that was the greatest feeling. You know, it's it's like scoring a goal. It's keeping a clean sheet, and that's what it's about. And it only it only gives the, the keeper more confidence as uh, as the season goes on. So coming in first game of the season, keeping a clean sheet, you know, it's just going to build for the goalkeeper, build the confidence, which is only a, a great thing. Ashlyn Coley just missed uh, misplayed a pass for Leah Foster. Foster just kind of ran a bit ahead of that ball and. That one rolled out, and that will be a throw-in taken by Tia Schaefer. The final five minutes will tick away here from J.C. Massey Field at the beautiful Georgian College here in Barrie, Ontario. Simcoe County Rovers kicking off their 2022 campaign. Ball comes in, played now by Coley, and the ball is cleared out, and... Here come the Blue Devils. Just as soon as it seemed they maybe had some hope, Nickel stuck her foot in there and said, no thanks, no you don't. Header goes to the wayside. But the captain, Rachel Melhado, she's really been putting in the effort today. Yeah, she's had a she's had a good game at the at heart of defence. You know, she's uh, she's been on everything, put a challenge in. You know, great in the air as well. And that will be a foul, charged towards the Rovers. Coming in to play that, that will trickle back out. Just walking by our commentary stand there was uh, Sawula, definitely favoring her, uh, her right leg there. They're still going, and she's taken down, but no foul given. Here comes the, here comes the Blue Devils, Donker was just completely corralled as down with the hamstring. This looks a nasty one. She's uh, She's gone down there. You know, no one around her. This this doesn't look good. Well, she is crawling. And the ball goes out. And the referee blows the whistle. She is in immense pain. She is in immense pain. That is... Uh, the trainer comes on to the pitch. What a devastating loss. That's Brienne Dessa. The midfielder 
You instantly saw the second she went down, she screamed. She yeah, was in a no, lot of pain. No one was around her there, and then it's, that's always it's always scary when uh, when you see a player go down um, and no one's around, no challenge. But it looks like it's just a spot of cram. But I tell you, she's worked her socks off today. She's had to, she's had an absolute incredible game, um, and the Rovers have been looking to play through her. They're looking for her, get her on the ball. And it looks like things are they're trying to get things to go through her. So you know what? She's uh, she's put an absolute shift in today. And Jordan Tirolo, she's there on the sideline, ready to go in just in case. Number 19 could see her first action of the field, but a devastating loss if Desa can't come back. But she went down and just she, she tried. She tried to continue, but it just wasn't gonna happen. I definitely applaud it, and it looks like they will sub someone off. Yeah, she's going to take it off. She's limping as she heads off the field. So in a relief comes Jordan Tirolo. Yeah, hopefully it's nothing serious and it's just a little bit of cramp. Um, but like I said, she's uh, she's running socks off today. Put a shift in for the team, but, you know, all the Rovers have. They've, uh, they've worked extremely hard uh, off the ball. Uh, with their shape, you know, and, and pressing. Um, and to be honest, I've been so surprised that they've only played together one, te one time. And the way that they've gelled um, straight away, it's, uh, it's been incredible to see. Well, they want more. They say play till the whistle. And it looks like they want more. Tirolo, the substitute, trying to make her presence known. The Rovers maybe want four. Dumping it down, Donker and Schaefer off the back of Donker. And that is all she wrote from J.C. Massey Field. 3-0 is your final score. Well, what a fantastic opening day for the Rovers. It was um, an incredible game all around, but I think the Rovers, you know, in the first half, you could see that the Blue Devils were extremely comfortable and confident, looked like they've played for a long time together, were moving the ball around, and then once the Rovers did find their feet, you know, when the nerves came out, then they started to get the ball down, play some great football, and then the opening goal, unbelievable strike, and it was uh, a goal that they needed to build that confidence and get them going throughout the game. But the way the, the way the Rovers came out in the second half was unbelievable. The organization, the discipline, uh, the energy, the attitude, everything was spot on throughout. And you could see that with the two goals that they scored. They dominated the game and the Blue Devils didn't even know how to play. They couldn't play how they wanted to. They, they couldn't, they didn't have that plan B. Uh, but overall, it was, uh, it was a fantastic and fascinating, fascinating game of football to watch. Yep, Yasmin Jamison picks up her first clean sheet of the season excellent for uh, excellent for her and for the three goals the 27 yard strike by Alyssa Nickel uh, the cross excellent finish by Chloe Udenberg and finally the substitute Leah Foster getting one of her own with an excellent single uh, single woman effort there but in your opinion Jake woman of the match who would you say do you know what? It's it's a, it's a difficult decision. You know, it's uh, I think that they've all I think they've all really played uh, a fantastic game of football, and I couldn't really pinpoint who I think would be the man of the match. What about yourself, Alex? You know what? I gotta agree with you, but I definitely gotta see Alyssa Nickel uh, getting that first opening goal and really setting the tone for this ga uh, game. Her leadership has been incredible, um, but. The Rovers will be back at it again sooner rather than later, and I'm sure a big 3-0 win is definitely something to, uh, to ride home about. But from J.C. Massey Field, I'm Alex Gallagher. He's Jake Burford. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be uh, back shortly for the men's game.